Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the Zoom screen. <clears throat> Would somebody like to offer themselves to uh, describe what happened in this short meditation? Nasiraj, wow, he's such a good boy these days. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> it's still happening, actually. Um, I feel a very, very strong energy just going through my entire body it's like my body is kind of it's it's in a way stops existing it kind of gets liquid and whenever i could watch this the in the meditation then i just started crying i just started crying there was like a strong sadness and there was strong pain in my chest and in a way, when I could allow this, there was a lot, also plus in this. And then at some point, some thoughts came back and then my mind started describing what happens. And then I, I kind of calmed down a bit and then it happened again. Right. I mean, if people now look closely at Nasaraj's eyes, you can see how his eyes are very open and silent. It's very nice. And when he talks about being sad, those who don't know his situation, he has a situation where his mother, unfortunately, has recently been diagnosed with, um, with a cancer in her brain. So this is a very strong situation for you, Nasraj, now since about two weeks, I think. So yes, I think... And, just, and just before this meeting, I read a message from a friend from my mother and it just touched me very deeply. And then this meditation started. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing, thank you. Maybe somebody else would like to share? If you'd like to share, you just wave your hand. Ah, we have Brett who I know is from England, although we haven't met yet. Okay, hello, Brett. Hello. Um, uh, I'm in a similar situation to Nataraj, but um, the I found um, my relationship has just recently oh. ended, and I kept getting thoughts of my ex-partner coming into my, my, my mind. Um, I tried to empty the thoughts again using self-inquiry um, and it went peaceful and quiet for a moment um, and then thoughts of both my parents who've passed away recently um, and again I used the self-inquiry and um, managed to bring myself back uh, into a state of equilibrium I guess you call it um, where there are no thoughts. Um, but yeah, I think the main thing for me there was just the thoughts of my ex-partner and my parents. Right, right. Yeah. So um, I can understand that, you know, there is some sadness and so on. And of course, when we have a separation from somebody we're very close to, um, then, of course, that person tends to show up in our mind for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But on a new note, because I don't know you, Brett, uh, mm -hmm. if I look on the left side, you have about five or six guitars lined up. I do, yes. So no, nobody told me that you're a musician. You, you presumably are a musician. Um, well, I'm actually an engineer, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, music is a love. I love music. Right, right. You're the, the unknown Rolling Stone, maybe. Um, no, maybe not. <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to sing and I like to write songs. Um, 
but I, I kind of, uh, it's, 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 it's therapy in its own way. I think being able to express yourself like that. Yeah. Right. Have you ever sung mantras? Yes. Um, I, um, I've tried to from the Bhagavad Gita because I've read that, um, through one of Gary Weber's books and, um, I've kind of like sung um, some of the Sanskrit in in my mind to try to alleviate some of the things that have been going on. Um, one of them uh, was Aham Atma Gudikesha Sava Buta. Um, and it it's kind of translates, I think, to something like peace, love and happiness to all beings on all planes in all universes. And that's one of my favorites that I, I chant. So, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, I think we're going to see you in the near future. So yes. here in our community, we have a mantra band mm. and uh, they've been playing together for some longer time. Yes. Was this and, the, were these the people who were playing on the video at the beginning? Yes, yes. Yeah. In fact, that, I think tonight I didn't quite see it, but I think that was... Um, a concert in Ramana Ashram in India. So we go every January to India and since 21 years, I think. And mm -hmm. four or five times we've now played in the ashram. Oh, wow. And that's always very sort of energetic. Yeah. Of course. That would be a privilege. That would be a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when you come and visit us, maybe you choose one of your many guitars and bring it with you. I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. So much. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I see your cat's also enjoying the meeting. Yeah, yes, he's. Well, I've, I think I've, I think Eckhart Tolle said he'd had several uh, spiritual teachers, and all of them have been cats, and and I'm in the same vein. I find right. cats, and they've all been my spiritual teachers. So yeah. Um, I, I do love him. He's a very, uh, very affectionate fellow. All right. Okay, good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Would somebody else like to uh, volunteer? You can just wave your hand a little bit. Okay, good. Pavati. Pavati living in our community in Spain at the moment. Yes, hello. Hello, Pavati. <clears throat> what was new this time uh, in the meditation, there was not the, to distinguish for what is the strongness. There was just only silence and space, but nothing too stronger or not stronger. It was just so... Right. Well, it, I mean, it was only, I think, a week ago we had this very nice meeting together. Yeah. Uh, I still probably, <laughs> I probably not, I'm not meant to say this. In fact, Indira particularly told me not to say this. But recently I've started offering sessions, uh, which take about two hours, two and a half hours, <laughs> where, where, um, uh, one person takes LSD, and that's not me. But so in this case, it was Pavati, and she sat with a little bit of LSD, not very, not very much actually. Um, and she went into a very beautiful empty space where she became very melty, and then uh, we were able to investigate a bit what's happening inside, which in her case was that there wasn't much happening inside. So now it's about a week later. I mean, would you comment maybe about how you feel now after I doing think, that? Yeah. And maybe a, a comment about it? Yeah. I can say that uh, it's still working. What was yeah. happening, what was so strong, the presence of everything. Although I used to be in my room, which is one to two meters in the night. And right. whatever I did, I couldn't sleep because everything was so present. <laughs> but yeah. whatever I did, I got up, I got down. Some very simple things was so amazing, and I can still feel it in my groin somehow. Or 
difficult to describe, but it is so beautiful. Right. And, and this, this feeling of intense presence, has this continued through the whole week? It even continues, today? Yeah, it continues, but um, a bit less. A bit less, right. Yeah, a bit right. less. But yeah. in a very beautiful, a beautiful leftover. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Good. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm planning to uh, offer these kind of sessions more often to people I'm close with because um, I think I did four recently and each one, um, I would say, worked very well. Um, and having a little bit of LSD just helps to bring the emptiness, I would say. If the emptiness is sort of lurking around, it, the LSD just takes away the dominant, some of the dominant thinking. So uh, I think it's very useful and I'm going to investigate more and more with, about that. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. And if I don't know you very well, I never talked about LSD just now, okay? You, you can just blank that out. Okay. So um, perhaps one more person would like to share. Okay, we have Shakti. Okay. If you say hello, then you become on the main screen. Hello. Hello. Good. Can you see yourself now on the whole screen? Uh, I can see myself in a small screen. Oh, but okay. It didn't maybe I try. Well, you can't mm. do anything. So, um, mm. um, oh, maybe could you um, oh, arrange it that I'm on the screen with whoever I'm speaking to? That would be best. Because I don't want to. I don't want to be on the screen when I talk. Ah, oh, now I'm perfect. Okay, so now when I talk and then. We dialogue together. That's much nicer. Okay, good. And what happened for you? Uh, during this meditation, I had like a body sensation um, in a place where I already felt it during the last few days. It's a kind of um, chest area going to the shoulder. And it feels like I'm still holding on to something like holding quite strong with the left side. And this was something I felt in the meditation in the first, first inside looking. In the second inside looking, it changed a little bit and I had like sensations in the throat area. And in the third, Inside looking, it changed into throat and also chest area, but more to the right side. So a little bit like a triangle. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it's well well observed, yeah. I mean, one of the points of this particular meditation is that it's suggesting how important self-awareness is, self-awareness that we develop an ability to look inside and read whatever is happening. Uh, for many people, most people, I could say, there'll be some thoughts. But if you carry on quietly observing, uh, then as you explain, uh, often the thoughts start to disappear. And then maybe you have a, a physical sensation. Um, and then indeed after some more minutes it could be that it gets very quiet again so i mean we are doing it only for i don't know 12 minutes but if you would spend maybe double that time then it's quite likely that almost everybody would go from thoughts to something to um, a deep silence so it's a very simple meditation but actually it's also um, kind of giving us the chance to get used to self-awareness. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
good. And it's very nice tonight for me that I haven't had to actually uh, choose somebody because we've had uh, several people offering themselves to share. This is always very nice. And um, perhaps we have one last person, especially one of the people I haven't met before. There's uh, Mariam I haven't, I think, met before or, or not recently. And Clara, I think I haven't met recently. Who else is there? I think everybody else. I think would one of you two like to share something? You don't have to, of course. And we have a very good translator in Indira, so you can speak in German if that's more comfortable. No, you, you would prefer yeah, hello. Okay. Schönen guten Abend. Okay, good. Um, oh, you've got both of you, both of you speaking now. So let's start with Mariam, and then we'll come to. Um, beide. Fangen wir mal mit der Mariam an. Okay, so what happened for you, Mariam? Uh, yeah, I, I felt a deep silence, and sorry, my, my voice is so hoarse. <laughs> I gotta go. Cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was, uh, there was peace. I felt that peace and, um, I was, um, I felt that I'm, I'm united with that peace. And despite the sore soreness that, um, I feel on my throat, but that peace and silence was so strong and that was a good feeling. Okay, good, good. Are you having, are you actually a bit sick at the moment? Uh, yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> okay, okay yeah. good. good. And we haven't met before, I think, have we? Uh, no, it is my first session, actually. Okay, good, good. Okay, and have you been to the Open Sky House? Uh, no, never. Oh, okay. So then can I ask how you connected with us tonight? Um, I actually, I, I Googled it because, um, I wanted to be a member of, um, let's say, um, uh, a union like this, um, in order to get connected with more like-minded people and to be under supervision of a master to learn more and experience more. So yeah, this way okay. I, I can okay. agree. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, maybe we'll see you in person one of these days. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Thank you for sharing. Sure. And then we go to um, Clara. Would you like to share something? Yeah, nochmal hallo, schönen guten Abend. Yeah, hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah ich... Um verfolge seit Mai, verfolge ich also Mochi und ähm, höre mir sie sehr viele ähm, Interviews von ihm an, sehr viele Videos. Ich spreche leider ganz wenig Englisch und das so sind... Ja, yeah, wenn wir haben... Yeah. Since May, I am following Mochi and watching many videos from him. Uh, unfortunately, right. I uh, don't speak English. Okay. Okay. Und uh, die viele Videos von ihm sind halt in Deutsch übersetzt. <coughs> Und von daher kann ich das ganz gut verfolgen. Many videos uh, from him are translated into German. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Und ich merke einfach, dass mir das unglaublich gut tut. Ich sitze sehr viel, was er eben empfiehlt, um in die Stille zu gehen. And I have the feeling it's very good for me and he's recommending to sit a lot and come into silence and this is what I'm doing. Okay. And have you been doing this kind of quiet sitting already a longer time in your life? Und diese Stille sitzen, machst du das schon länger in deinem Leben? 
Nein, erst seit Mai, seit ich erst äh, ja, auf äh, Mochi aufmerksam gemacht wurde. Vorher kannte ich auch Mochi nicht. No, only since May, when somebody pointed me to Muji. I didn't know Muji before. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've known Muji for um, oh, a very long time. Let me think. Must be 30 years, actually. I met Muji uh, 30 years ago. Because we share the same, the, we share the same the, teacher. Ich kenne Muji schon seit 30 Jahren. Uh, wir haben den gleichen Lehrer gehabt. Ja, yeah, okay. Good. Und äh, da ich, äh, ich wohne in Bergisch Gladbach, das ist also ziemlich nah von Leverkusen. Und ähm, ja, es gibt sehr wenige, die sich, die auf diesem Weg sind. Und von daher, ja, wäre es für mich schön, wenn ich eben da, sagen wir, eine Gemeinschaft finde, die eben auch auf diesem Weg ist und wo dann eben auch da ein ganz anderer Austausch stattfinden kann. So I'm living in Bergisch Gladbach, which is close to Leverkusen. And it would be nice if I could find a group of people who also like this. So I can connect to. Right. Well, we we are living. I'm living in a community um, in, near to Leverkusen in a village called Hitor, and we've been here for 21 years. So uh, we're very available to you if you like to come and see us. Yeah, ich lebe in einer Gemeinschaft in der Nähe von Leverkusen in einem Dorf, das heißt Hitor, und wir sind hier seit 20 Jahren. Also, du kannst hier gerne hinkommen. Wir sind ganz offen für Leute. Ja, ja ich habe mir das im Internet schon angeschaut. Und äh, deshalb, wie gesagt, habe ich mich auch da gemeldet und eben auch diese Information bekommen. Yes, I uh, found you already in the Internet. And so I registered and got, got the information. Good, good. But as I was saying, if you like to just come and have lunch, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, we have a rather beautiful old house and uh, you're welcome to, to spend some time with us. And you will find um, that if you send us your email, we can send you our recent newsletter, which shows all kind of uh, activities which we are doing together. Ja, du kannst gerne einfach mal zum Mittagessen vorbeikommen, wenn du möchtest. Ja, wir leben hier im ganz großen alten Haus, direkt am Rhein. Das ist ja schön hier. Und wenn du uns eine E-Mail-Adresse schickst, dann können wir dir auch unsere Newsletter schicken. Da sind ganz viele Veranstaltungen drin, die hier stattfinden. Also den Newsletter habe ich schon. <lacht> I already get the newsletter. I already registered for it. Ah, okay. Okay, so we don't want you sitting at home that round the corner and not coming and uh, enjoying this lavish um, spectacle of spiritual interest <laughs> that goes on here every day. Ja, also du musst ja nicht uh, um die Ecke sitzen hier. Du kannst ja auch hier hinkommen und hier die spirituelle Luft genießen, die hier bei dir we ganz in der Nähe geschieht. We, we don't have any cats, but we have a kind of small zoo. Wir haben zwar keine Katzen, aber wir haben hier so einen kleinen Zoo. Yeah, we have a, a, a quite a range of, uh, we have fish, we have uh, ducks, we have uh, uh, guinea pigs and many small animals. Also we have fish, Enten, Meerschweinchen and viele andere kleine Tiere. Okay, welcome, welcome. Okay. Herzlich willkommen. Danke. Okay, so um, I think we'll sh move on a bit because um, as many of you know, um, Wie viele von euch wissen? since a couple of weeks, I'm working very intensely on a new Ramana Mahashi book. Are you translating quietly or? Yeah, she's in the background. Yeah. 
Oh, in the background. Okay, okay. I'll pause for the translation. So, um, so um, two years ago, we published a selection of Ramana Mahashi's dialogues, which uh, were occurring in 1936. This was a very interesting moment when he was still himself quite, sorry, in 1936, and he was 56. So he was much younger than we normally see his picture. And this book has been very well received. This is not our book or all, all our um, Open Sky Press has done with that book, with that material is that we've done a lot of editing and formatting and selecting uh, from a much bigger manuscript, which somebody put up on Amazon uh, three or four years ago. And right now I'm working on a second volume, which is focused on self-inquiry. The moment that we've collected about 200 pages of dialogues that took place in his ashram in 1936 on the subject of self-inquiry. And uh, um, I think it was yesterday I came across a particular um, dialogue which really touched me because this particular dialogue is a fairly rare moment when Ramana talks about love. He tends not to use that word so much. So um, this is a small dialogue where we can say he's pointing out that the essence of the self, the essence, our essence, if you like, the essence of the self is in fact love. This is, if you like, an, a certain energy. This is not I love you kind of love. This is not romantic love. This is a deep place inside us where um, true love resides, if you like. So anyway, the question he was asked was, to everyone who comes here, Bhagwan recommends Vichara only. Vichara is self-inquiry. As you know, Ramana Mahashi is very famous for who am I? So this, this book is going to be titled Vichara, which is self-inquiry. And then Bhagwan answered, Vichara is a means to eliminate ignorance, which present prevents love from shining forth. For the nature of the self is love itself. Love cannot be pract practiced as a practice. All that is possible is to surrender to it. There is no such thing as incalculation of love. Love is already there. It alone is. All that you all that is needed on your part is to give up thought, which makes you imagine yourself to be apart from love and so merge in love. Then there is only love, which is bliss beyond imagination. To one who has discovered the ecstatic joy without reason, love, practice is a laughable absurdity. Unto those who solicit justifications, we may say that such love blossoms only in souls which have perfected their practice in previous births. A little sting on the end there. So I, I'm going to read that again, uh, paragraph by paragraph, and I would like to invite you to share something or ask something to me about that particular paragraph. So we go through it bit by bit together. So as probably most of you who are familiar with Ramana Hashi, you know 
that actually he's very much famous for who am I? And this is, um, this is, he calls it Vishara and we call it um, who am I? And in fact, the Open Sky Press has, has published a very beautiful book, well, Ramana's book, which is called Nanya, which is who am I? So maybe some of you people who are new tonight, you might be interested if you go on our website, Open Sky Press website, you can find um, um, these two recent books, which are not our books, they're, uh, they're Ramana Mahashi's books, but we've published them in a very modern and um, very nicely designed quality, I could say. So, um, and which we've also done with some of Papaji's books. Anyway, going back to the text, Vichara is a means to eliminate ignorance, which prevents love from shining forth. For the nature of the self is love itself. So in India, they call the intuition or the essence, they call this the self. And um, so in, the t in Ramanam's text, you find this word the self very often. And um, his technique of self-inquiry works to reduce the power of the mind or the power of thinking, you could say. So if you practice self-inquiry as he would suggest in a very intensive way, day by day by day, then after some time, even maybe say two weeks, you will notice that the number of thoughts that start appearing inside is much less. So this technique of self-inquiry is taking away the thoughts because we're very attached to our thoughts, of course. We believe we are the thoughts. We believe we are the body and we believe we are the thoughts. And certainly we're not the body and certainly we're not the thoughts. So these thoughts that constantly appear inside us are in fact acting as a kind of barrier or screen to prevent us directly accessing the essence of every human being, which is love. And the essence of every human being is the same essence. The love is the same. This is the, uh, yeah, the essence of every human being. And uh, of course that is always functioning. And the reason why we're not very aware maybe about this love is because there is a kind of screen of thoughts that keeps us from really having a direct contact. So for example, tonight Nataraj was telling us what happened today for him and in the meditation. So, um, He's going through, of course, a very strong time because very suddenly his mother is um, uh, facing a really difficult health situation, very difficult. And of course, it's very deeply touching for him. And in a way, when something this intense happens to us, it tends to clear out all those silly thoughts about this or that or the other. It just wipes away all those unnecessary thoughts. And tonight it was very beautiful that Nataraj actually several times recently has been sharing with me that in the middle of his sort of deep sadness about his mother's situation, he discovers a huge peace inside him. And um, this is causing him sometimes to cry for no reason. It's not exactly, I think, crying due to sadness, it's crying also due to the uh, feeling so touched from this space inside. So I call this tears of joy, actually, tears of joy. Would anybody like to comment on this? I'm sure 
Uh, in fact, many of you know this. <clears throat> Would anybody like to share? Okay, aren't you? Also, ich äh, kann sagen, dass ich diese Selbsterforschung praktiziere. Ah, uh, Clara, uh, you just I, need I to wait. Like... Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I just like to have her on the... Okay, go ahead. So I would like to share that I'm practicing the self-inquiry. Okay. Wie gesagt, ich kann sagen, dass ich seit kurzem diese Selbsterforschung praktiziere. Und äh, wenn ich in die Stille gehe und es kommen Gedanken, dass ich das dann praktiziere und frage, zu wem kommt dieser Gedanke? So when I go into silence and then thoughts are appearing, then I'm asking the question, to whom these thoughts are coming? Yeah, right. ich, und ich antworte dann, der Gedanke kommt zu mir. And then I reply, the thought comes to me. Und, okay. mir, und mir ist auch ich. Und dann die Frage, wer bin ich? And then I'm asking, who am I? Good, that, that's perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah, ja, and <laughs> I, and I merke auch wirklich, wie gesagt, weil ich das jetzt auch bestimmt schon, ja, sechs Wochen praktiziere, dass die Gedanken wirklich viel weniger werden, auch wenn ich in die Stille gehe. And I can observe, because now I'm playing for about six weeks, I can observe that the thoughts really become less, also when I go into silence. All right. Well, I'm very happy for you to be saying this tonight. I've been saying this for 30 years, and unfortunately, uh, most people don't hear that. Also, ich bin wirklich sehr froh, dass du das heute Abend sagst. Weil ich sage das seit 30 Jahren und die meisten Leute, die hören das einfach nicht. Ja. Aber natürlich, es funktioniert nicht, wenn man es regelmäßig macht. Weil es funktioniert nämlich nicht, äh, man muss, wenn man das nicht regelmäßig macht. Man muss das regelmäßig machen. Ich mache es, äh, aber das vergesse ich leider noch zu oft, auch manchmal, wenn am Tag plötzlich irgendwelche unangenehmen ja, Gedanken auftauchen, dass ich das dann auch praktiziere. Ja, yeah, sometimes I'm forgetting during the day when I have unpleasant thoughts that I also practice then. This I'm still often forgetting. Right, right. It's okay, you don't have to be uh, hard on yourself if you forget. I think everybody forgets. Alles okay, du musst jetzt nicht so streng mit dir sein, wenn du das äh, vergisst. Jeder vergisst das zwischendurch. However, when you see the benefits you're getting over, you know, six weeks or two months, when you see the benefits. Also wenn du den Nutzen siehst, den du ja jetzt in den sechs Wochen schon davon hast. Then of course it gives you the support to continue. Das unterstützt dich ja dann weiterzumachen. Ja, und, und es gibt. Ja. Mhm. Okay. Ja, und es gibt einen großen Frieden in mir, was, was ich merke. Yes, and I realize there's a big peace in myself. Right. So this big peace has always been in you. Also dieser große Frieden, der war immer in dir. This is your essence. Das ist deine Essenz. And so, you know, if you start getting kind of tastes of that, wenn du da jetzt so einen Geschmack von bekommst, then naturally that also gives you support to carry on with the self-inquiry. Das unterstützt dich ja auch, der Selbsterforschung weiterzumachen. Ja, ganz sicher. Weil der Frieden in mir, der war ja verdeckt durch meine Gedanken, Überzeugungen oder was auch immer da plötzlich äh, hochkommt. Und äh, dadurch, dass das weniger wird, kann der Friede auch 
viel mehr zum Vorschein kommen. Yes, the big piece was in me, but it was covered by my thoughts and by my ideas. And now where the right. thoughts and ideas get less, the peace can much more uh, arise. Right, right. It's interesting for me, when I first started to share, I was living in Sydney in Australia. It was about, uh, I don't know, 25 or 30 years ago. And Als ich anfing, I used... Zeit zu geben, da lebte ich in Sydney in Australien. Das ist so 25, 30 Jahre her. And I, I used to encourage my students, you know, to do the self-inquiry. Und da habe ich meine, Freu meine Schüler immer ermutigt, Selbsterforschung zu machen. But I always had the feeling they didn't really do it. Ich hatte immer das Gefühl, dass sie das nicht wirklich machen. A lot of sun in Australia and beaches and they love drinking beer, so they had many other things to do, not just self-inquiry. Da gibt so viele schöne Strände in Australien, die Sonne scheint da immer und die lieben es, Bier zu trinken. Also da kann man so viele andere Sachen machen, außer die Selbsterforschung. And um, anyway, but when I came to Germany, I didn't plan really to come to Germany, but I arrived in Germany about 20 years ago. I thought it would be for a short visit. Und als ich dann nach Deutschland kam, ich hatte jetzt nicht wirklich geplant, nach Deutschland zu gehen. Ich bin vor 25 Jahren eigentlich nur zu einem kurzen Besuch hier hingekommen. And I was also sharing about self -inquiry. Da habe ich dann auch die Selbsterforschung weitergegeben. And in the first weeks that I was in Germany, I was completely shocked because people would come and talk to me in the meetings about self inquiry Und als ich anfing, da war ich total schockiert, weil die Leute, die kamen dann nach einer Woche wieder und redeten in den Meetings über die Selbsterforschung. Like you just did. Genauso wie du das gerade gemacht hast. So here I am 21 years later, I'm still living in Germany. Also jetzt lebe ich 21 Jahre später immer noch in Deutschland. So I think this is my destiny. Ich glaube, das ist mein Schicksal. And of course, I'm very touched to have many people that I've met over the 20 years who have been seriously doing the self-inquiry. Und ich bin sehr berührt davon. In den 20 Jahren bin ich sehr vielen Menschen begegnet, die die Selbsterforschung wirklich sehr ernsthaft gemacht haben. And I'm, I'm hoping that this book that I'm working editing now, which is Ramana Mahashi's book, it's not my book, I'm only going to be the editor. Um, I think this book is going to be an amazing, um, truly amazing uh, contribution to self-inquiry. Und ich glaube, dieses Buch von Ramana Mahashi, was ich gerade editiere, ich glaube, dass das einen riesigen Beitrag zu der Selbsterforschung leisten wird. Because what's very touching is that when he was talking to um, people who came to visit him, many of them being Western people. Weil was sehr berührend ist, als er zu den Leuten gesprochen hat, die zu ihm kamen, viele waren da von, von den Westlern. He would always, um, well, he would, have a, he would, if the person came with his own practice, then Ramana would say, okay, do yoga, do meditation, do your breathing exercises. He, he, would, he would encourage people to continue what they were already involved in. Also wenn die Leute schon eine eigene Praxis hatten, dann hat er zum Beispiel Yoga, Meditation, Atemtechnik, dann hat er immer gesagt, ja, mach das mal weiter. Hat er immer die ermutigt, das weiterzumachen. But if they didn't have already a practice, he would encourage them to try Vishara, self-inquiry. Aber wenn die noch keine Praxis hatten, dann hat er sie immer ermutigt, Vishara, die Selbsterforschung zu machen. So this material which I'm editing at the moment is a complete treasure. Und dieses Material, was ich da gerade editiere, ist ein totaler Schatz. Because he is discussing self-inquiry with, um, how can I say, 
from many in many details in many details and from many different directions weil die Selbsterforschung wirklich sehr detailliert und aus sehr vielen unterschiedlichen Richtungen erklärt. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this book will be uh, tremendous support. Ich glaube, dass dieses Buch eine unglaubliche Unterstützung sein kann. Also ich, ich denke auch, also ich habe hier so ein ganz dünnes, kleines Büchlein nur. Ähm, Wer bin ich? Das sind nur ganz wenige Auszüge von dem, was er gesagt hat. Und das hat mir sehr, sehr schon geholfen, die Selbsterforschung besser zu verstehen. I have a very thin book here, Who am I? And only this few pages help me a lot to understand the self-inquiry. Right. Und deshalb so denke ich, und deshalb denke ich, in, in diesem Buch, was, äh, was jetzt äh, bei euch zu äh, erwerben ist, ähm, wird mich sehr interessieren, weil ich das sehr wertvoll finde, immer noch mehr darüber zu erfahren. Yes, and the book you are doing, I'm very interesting in, because I find it very valuable to know more about it. Right, right. I mean, if you like to look on our uh, Open Sky Press website, you could think of buying uh, Aham Sparana. Wenn du auf unsere Open Sky Press Webseite gehst, da uh, ist das Aham Sparana. Vielleicht ist das interessant für dich. Also ich hatte das schon gesehen, das habe ich schon im Auge. I already saw it. I already had a sort of, um, yeah, I considered already buying it. Okay. Well, you'll see in that book a lot of uh, where Ramana is talking in that book about self-inquiry. In diesem Buch redet Ramana auch viel über die Selbsterforschung. But the book I'm editing now is focused only on self-inquiry, well, mainly on self-inquiry. Aber das Buch, was ich jetzt editiere, das fokussiert hauptsächlich auf die Selbsterforschung. Ja, ich denke, das ist auch das, also für mich ist das auch das Wichtigste. For me, this is the most important. Ja, yeah, good, good. Okay, so very nice to talk to you. Sehr schön mit dir. See if anybody else likes to um, share about this first paragraph. You probably all forgotten what the paragraph was. Oh, there's Anna. Okay, Madhu. Can you hear me? Yes, I can okay. hear you and see you. Great. So I want to say something about the tears of joy that you mentioned with Nataraj. Okay. Because etwas über die Freundin sagen, die du. Um because it's so interesting because that happens to me all the time the last few days like when i read like a page from a book or even just look at a picture from papaji or ramana mahashi like um i start crying and my entire body shakes and something else that's very strange happened is that when there are like no thoughts. So the last two days and it's just complete silence. My breath changes and um, I inhale, but the exhale changes. And I just noticed that because the exhale goes out completely. Like I exhale all the air in my lungs um, and then there's so much um, tension in my upper body. So like I exhale and um, there's so much tension in my body. And um, that just sometimes happens. Like I don't do it on pro, I don't do it. I just notice when that happens <clears throat> and I could stop it, but why? And um now my body is exhausted from that and it's very weird well i think the thing that's even weirder is that 
there was some feeling after the retreat that you might get a bit away from this interest and you might get lost again into the um into the regular society having to run every day and jump and whatever you're doing in your sports yeah well um and you are you translating quietly are you in zero I'm, I'm stopping yes, to give a translation yes, okay okay fine fine so and mm -hmm. I'm uh Madhu I'm very happy that this is happening to you you see because uh that means on a kind of deep level that these two guys Ramana Mahashi and uh Papaji they're not going to let you go easily no they're fighting over your soul yeah and it's so strange, like other things happened yesterday and today, and it's just too crazy to tell everything now, but um, it's very beautiful because um, I go and just, I also went to university today to do sports with a friend. I just do that um, and it's a good time. Like it's okay. Then I go home it's quiet i've been in my like on my own for the last two three days and um usually i used to feel very sad and lonely then and maybe that just comes up but it, it's good because i have to stay with that and um it's just really nice so okay very good very good so um, we'll see how all this is going to work out, but you know, I think you're, um, how can I say it? You're not going to find it so easily to become a MA high jump sports expert or something. Yeah. I think your, de your, your destiny may go in another direction. Yeah, we will see. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Good. Anyway, these tears are very lovely. I mean, since I met you, you you're always crying, but th these tears are tears from a place inside you uh, where you feel touched. That's why I call them tears of joy. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it was um strange to now see that crying is a good thing because we were always like oh why are you crying what's wrong but there's nothing wrong um yeah. but what's stranger to me is this breathing thing because um like i feel very heavy on my heart area from all this and it's really exhausting actually um but it's just what happens interesting yeah 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 okay well um as you know there are many people in open sky house who would love to have you uh, connected to us so whenever you feel like and uh, you don't have to go to to the university you can always come and visit us for lunch or something okay <laughs> okay very good very good Good, so um, where have we got to? So maybe I read another paragraph, shall I? <clears throat> so he, he's also saying that you can't have a spiritual practice to create love. Love cannot be practiced uh, as a practice, can't be done as a practice. All that is possible is to surrender to love. There's no such thing as incalculation of love. Love is already there. It alone is. It alone is. And this is uh, not so easy to understand because most of us have been brought up in a society where love is always offered in terms of 
him and her, or nowadays in California, him and him and her and her, or whatever. Uh, so it always involves, in fact, duality. I love you and you love me, right? So, so this is, uh, if you like, the generally accepted idea about love. So when he's using the word love or I'm using the word love, this is not that love. It's a different kind of love. So we could say this is a love energy, if you like, or it's a, at the essence of our energy field. Uh, we, have, we have to somehow um, deprogram ourselves from you know, love stories and romantic poems and uh, the whole sort of society thing around love. We have to somehow deprogram all that because that's not really helpful. That's not really helpful. I guess somebody might like to ask me to go more into that. I'm happy to do that. But he's making it very clear that the essence of every human being is love. And he's also made it clear, I think, that what prevents us, if you like, living in that or living from that in every moment is a kind of screen. And this screen is basically old thoughts, old memories, and old ideas and old concepts and old judgments. All of this stuff, in fact, creates a very strong uh, screen that prevents us directly being aware of this love and living from this love. So this is very, it's a very beautiful, uh, this dialogue is a particularly beautiful one, actually. I was very happy to come across it uh, a couple of days ago. So would anybody like to talk about it in, in this way about, you can't make a practice, you can only get rid of what is in the way. Okay, Lakshmi. Ah. Okay, if you say a few words, we'll see you on the screen. Do you hear me now? Yeah, we see you and hear you, yeah. Fine. Um, when we were in Denia, I tried uh, to get nearly every morning to the sunrise and sat at the seaside and looked over the sea and waited for the sun. And I think um, this sunrise, when the sun started and the light started to rise, it, it was so overwhelming for me. It's every time it's overwhelming for me that I think I could, um, this feeling is, is love, I think. It's, it's overwhelming, um, yeah. I miss the words, really, um, because it's... I mean, um, there's, a, there's another way I, I would perhaps describe what you're describing. Yeah, because mm -hmm. by by sitting there, you know, you're walking yeah. down the, in the dark. You're sitting there, and then the sun starts rising. Yeah, and at, there's a certain moment maybe when it gets so amazingly beautiful because yeah. you're looking mm -hmm. looking out on a on a huge panorama. You know, yeah. it's a huge it's, space, mm -hmm. powerful yeah. space, and mm -hmm. in that moment, you can't really think. Yeah. It's like yeah. it just cuts completely yeah. any any thoughts. Yeah, that's another an, another way we do this. In fact, is just to sit quietly, as we did in the yeah. beginning of this meeting. And another way is to have a gong. You know, if you strike a gong, it mm -hmm. makes a certain sound, yeah. and this sound again cuts away all the thoughts. Mm -hmm. 
And so in the moment you cut away all the thoughts by watching this beautiful sunset or being there in this beautiful sunset, your mind mm -hmm. stops. And then as mm -hmm. he's saying, without practicing mm -hmm. anything, yeah. by mm -hmm. taking away all the thoughts, yeah. the love is exposed, the self is exposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And doing nothing. Or in, uh, in another... Well, do, do, doing, doing nothing, you see, is very important because, uh, yeah. you know, this is another thing that we've learned from the society that we have to do a lot, especially yeah. we need to do a lot if we want to get a lot. But actually it's not true, you see, because what you're describing is walking down, sitting down, looking out over the ocean, mm -hmm. and there you see the sunrise, then your mind simply stops, and then mm -hmm. you experience this enormous love. And then if you're like Anna, you would start crying, you see, that's very lovely. It's completely lovely. Mm -hmm. And you don't do anything, you know, yeah. you just had to wake up and then walk down five minutes to the sea. And mm -hmm. uh, we're very lucky to have the house so close to the water. And then you have this incredible experience every morning. That's it. So this is really wonderful. And, and what Brahman Mahashi is trying to show us is the possibility that we can have this beautiful moment in every moment. Mm. And the thing that prevents us having it in every moment is that we have many years of experience of thinking, 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 mm. and believing that we are the thoughts. And so this this uh, technique of self inquiry, which um, we were just talking about, this this is giving us a way to cut the thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, very good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so um, perhaps one more person on, on that paragraph. I must say it's very nice tonight that people are jumping in and waving their hand. It makes the whole meeting a bit more relaxed for me. I hate having to sort of pull it out of you, pull it out of you, you know. But tonight you're all very maybe I just need to go go away for a few months and come back, then then it all works stronger. Okay, so Brett would like to comment. Yeah, um Within the paragraph, um, I get a little bit sort of like confused by the word surrender. Um, I, I obviously surrender in the terms, particularly being English and British is a dirty word. We don't like it. Um, and I kind of have difficulty in sort of getting myself to, to surrender to that point where the silence begins um the self-inquiry seems to work in such a way with myself that i can bring those silent moments around but i don't know whether i might be getting um confused with the context of surrender within the paragraph which is what bhagavan is saying surrender to the self and surrendering yourself to the guru um i just find it a little bit I don't know. I, I I know it's a very difficult thing for a lot of people to do is that surrender. Um, but I find that I, I can kind of do it with the self inquiry, if you know what I mean. Um, and I think, I, I don't know. I, I, it, I just find that thing about having to base my, my burden upon somebody else, whether it is myself or whether it's a guru. And I think it's trying to, put that in perspective and trying to be able to work in such a way that I feel that it's my responsibility to find the self and find that peace within. So, I mean, I understand what you're saying. And of course, Ramana's answer would be, I mean, who is this one that you want to put the responsibility onto? See? So 
So, I mean, this word surrender, you'll be pleased to know that we're also at the moment editing a book about surrender as well. So we're going to publish Self-Inquiry and then uh, shortly later uh, another book from his, his um, dialogues about surrender. So the surrender that the, that's not liked in England is, you know, maybe surrendering in war to Napoleon or something like this. But the surrender we're talking about here, or he's talking about here, is not that surrender. It's not that we surrender to an authority or a power. It's not like that. This surrender is, is a completely different surrender. So we're not surrendering to somebody. We're surrendering to existence itself, which when I was young, um, it was God. I was called God. And now I prefer not using that word. So now I use the words divine intelligence. So there seems to be something uh, where we, we can surrender. So Ramana is not suggesting we surrender to him. He's suggesting we surrender to the divine intelligence. And he's also explaining that this surrender has to be um, a total surrender to have have a real effect yeah? and the guru is somebody who kind of comes in if you like to represent uh, the divine intelligence uh, because when we first start spiritual work um, it may be very useful to if you like project to somebody i.e a guru or a spiritual teacher um, it may help us in the beginning, but th there's no teacher, me included, who is interested in anybody surrendering, you know. So you, 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 you quickly step aside, you know, the, the teacher quickly steps aside just in the moment that you think you're going to surrender to him. And you go through the empty door and you turn, it turns out that you're actually surrendering to the vastness of the divine intelligence. So perhaps that might help you a bit. It, I, it, it clears, there, there's a bit of mist there, if you know what I mean, um, a little bit of fog. And I think what you've just said is is kind of, it's cleared it for me quite substantially, to be honest. Um, I think it's just, we, we have this, like I said, we have this issue with the word surrender in England. And, and I think what's happened is I've misinterpreted um the meaning of it it's, it's like a it's got two meanings to it and i and i i understand what what i understand what bhagavan's saying in the paragraph about surrendering to the that the, the self essentially and surrendering to that what you would call um divine intelligence um it's it's just i i, I think it's um it's just a little bit of a confusing element for me but i i i think from my personal perspective you know the self-inquiry does work for me um and there are moments of total and utter bliss I, I honestly i i cannot tell you it's um it like some of our friends here tonight have described you get that feeling of bliss and some of them are become very tearful and, and, I, and I, it's been the same for myself and i think it's um it's rather beautiful now to connect with you all and and have all that same sort of like my you know that same feeling um which is which is quite lovely so thank you everybody okay thank you and i remember once when i was because uh, some years ago actually 15 years ago i traveled around in india interviewing indian masters and actually i produced a book and a film from those interviews um and um i remember with one of the uh, masters, actually, the one that I felt was probably the most um, powerful one. And I asked him about this very question, you know, how in Europe, we're very reluctant to surrender to any guru or teacher, because in our in our society, it, it, it seems to reflect a kind of giving up on the part of the one who's surrendering. And if you like allowing the possibility for an authority to do things which we might not like him to be doing to us. And of course, there are stories about guru with sexual abuse and gurus with money abuse and power abuse and so on. So um, 
in Europe, I would say that, that this question of surrender is a difficult one. And what he said was very beautiful. He said, he said, well, actually, the guru, the work of the guru is not to show you that he is up here and you're down there. The work of the guru is to show you that you're exactly the same. So this is very beautiful. If you remember that, that we are all one. Everybody is the same. There's not many different cells. You know, you've got five cages and he's got three cages and he's got 25 cages of self. It's all the same self. And so the, the teacher's job is to get you to realize you're the same as the self. And this is a pretty mind blowing realization because I can think of myself when I was around 30, I came to my first teacher who, um, was called Rajneesh and later was called Osho. So when I came to this man, uh, and maybe I had some ideas of surrendering, but you know, I didn't really understand anything about anything, you know, and I, by, by going to him and uh, becoming involved with him and listening to him for many, many years, I went through a very good process, bringing me closer to the possibility of some kind of real surrender. Then I came to another teacher, Papaji, and rather quickly, following on what I had understood from Osho, I was able one day to let go enough that something profound happened. And in this part of this profound happening was to realize rather shockingly that Papaji and John David were actually the same. He had a different personality. He had a different culture. He was much older. He probably was much wiser, but essentially we were the same. And this was very shocking because when I first came to him, I came full of a kind of reverence, kind of respect and such things. And actually they didn't change. But the other idea that I was somehow lower and he was higher, this completely disappeared. So this is um, not so easy for Europeans, I would say. Yeah. Okay, good. Maybe we go on a little bit. All that is needed on your part is to give up thought, which makes you imagine yourself to be apart from love and so merge in love. Then there is only love, which is bliss beyond imagination. Very easy, you just give up thought. Ha ha ha, what could be easier? Give up thought. And of course, we know the reality of that is that you know, you might have to struggle for years trying to give up thought. It's not easy to give up thought. The idea may be easy, but the reality, of course, is not easy. And therefore, he's given us this self inquiry as a means to um, make it possible, even. So, the point of self inquiry is to gradually reduce your thoughts. And at the same time, as you reduce your thoughts, you are, in fact, then um, uh, opening yourself to your own essence and your own essence is love. So somebody maybe likes to um, re respond to that paragraph. Okay, Kiran. So about uh, giving up thought, um, then it doesn't really feel like um, um, I'm I'm doing this, or because sometimes it it happens, and then, for example, in the meditation at the beginning, it was really easy 
and with the help of self inquiry and and of watching what is what is the strongest, and then uh, this time it, I got very quickly in very energetic black space, and there's a bit of fear, and so thoughts came back, and then the thoughts disappeared. And this sometimes happens if if uh, it feels like this emptiness is very, very, very strong. And this creates fear. And other times the emptiness is very lovely. It is just uh, bright. And there comes love. So in my experience, <clears throat> there are different kinds of energies of emptiness. Well, there's also different kinds of situation, like whether you have fear or not. I mean, it's not completely, um, how can I say, it's not completely unreasonable or unexpected that when you come to a certain level of, of understanding and you start to have um, strong moments where you know, you experience energy perhaps much stronger than you normally experience it in your life. Um, and also, as Anna was, uh, uh, sorry, um, Madhu was sharing just now, when you have some kind of phenomena going on with your breathing, with your physical body, and how, you know, when you read a few lines um, of, from Ramana, you, you find yourself faking perhaps or su such things then it's quite reasonable in some way to get fear or fear just comes you know so i would say that um this is not a not an unexpected or unreasonable situation and you will find of course that when things continue going on like that you won't, in fact, be much more in fear because you'll realize after some time there's no reason to be afraid. And so um, something happens inside. And so um, if you like, you, the surrender that we were just talking about is just happening because you can't really surrender. I mean, who's going to surrender and how are you going to do it? OK, I surrender. OK, I stand here and say, I surrender. Well. If I'm the, the general of the army, I can write a document saying I surrender you know, to the other army. So this is one kind of surrender. But the surrender we're talking about is basically not even something that can be done. Surrender just happens. And when there is, if you like, um, some fear, there's some strong energy phenomena, which maybe not completely um for me you're not completely familiar with these two things going on and gradually you will find that it will come together by itself and there'll be no more fear because there can't be fear when you really come to the self there can't be fear so what you're talking about is suggesting you're kind of around you're close to this this essence and therefore, you're having some moments when uh, uh, you can say some fear is coming. Does that help at all? Yes. Um, this um, what helps a lot is not fight against this. Yeah, if there's st strong emotions like or, or fear coming, even fear out of that there's nothing. Yeah, then. Um, not fighting against it sometimes it dissolves very quickly and sometimes it dissolves into bliss or very quiet or love love or something like this and, and sometimes not right. yeah. i mean he's saying here which is bliss beyond imagination you see it gets so good you forget about ice cream you probably forget about sex and it's so good and you didn't really do anything and you can wow this is then you only can cry you see yeah okay very good mm -hmm. <clears throat>
So maybe the last paragraph. By the way, uh, on the mail you, you got tonight, uh, we 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 uh, sent you this this uh, text that I'm reading. To one who has discovered the ecstatic joy of love without reason, practice is a laughable absurdity. Unto those who solicit justifications, we may say that such, such love blossoms only in souls which have perfected their practice in previous births. So this paragraph's a little bit tough, I would say. And uh, sometimes in the dialogues that Ramana has with different people, there can be uh, sort of tough moments. And what, editing many of these dialogues, <clears throat> I came to feel that when people ask him questions, he didn't really, um, how can I say, he didn't really answer the question exactly, but he answered the person. And when I was spending uh, quite a few years with Papaji, I noticed the same thing, that he didn't really answer the question, um, he answered the person. And so, for example, this comments here, probably, well, it could have been that he was talking to somebody um, who was very much asking about spiritual practice. And he's saying, well, of course, if you really discover a true love, a sensual love, then it's completely absurd to think of doing a spiritual practice. Because if you discover the self, and you truly discover the self, you're beyond any spiritual practice. I always feel a bit shy to say this, but I haven't really meditated for the last 30 years. So why would I meditate? For what? So you, once you come to this essence, you don't need to meditate anymore. In fact, what I'm saying is not really true because um, you know, I've been doing spiritual work now for 30 years, and uh, so in one, another way, I'm meditating all the time, you could say. So it depends what you mean. But, you know, to, to formally sit and put a candle and look at the candle and then meditate on the candle, um, this is, this is um, very useful in the beginning of spiritual work, of course. Some, this kind of meditation is very... Uh, useful, but um, it's not any big deal, really. And it's not even really meditation. Osha had a wonderful book about meditation. I've forgotten what, he, what the title was, but anyway, he had this lovely book. And in this book, there are many kinds of meditation. And at the, the last um, paragraph of the book says something like, all these practices are not really meditation. So after you've done all these practices and you've maybe chosen one or two and you've done it for a few years, then you finally read the last bit of the book and he's saying none of these are really meditation. So what does he mean when he says that? What he means is that the true meditation is happening in every moment. That's meditation. Anyway, this is only words, of course. I'm not personally, I'm not saying that it's not very useful in the beginning of your spiritual time. It's not, it, of course, very, it can be very useful to, to, uh, to meditate, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So then he goes on to say that, um, He's saying that probably, as it doesn't make sense to, to do a spiritual practice like meditation, it must be that in your past lives, in previous births, he may be, he's saying you may be, have done a lot of spiritual practice. So this is, this is also an interesting comment he's making because he doesn't talk very much about um, 
reincarnation or previous births. So, um, <clears throat> so this is this is something where I I would guess he was talking particularly to one person who was sitting in front of him. And uh, you'll see when you read the book that this happens very often that he's talking particularly to somebody and he's not necessarily answering the question as it's asked to him. Okay, anybody like to comment on this last paragraph? Um, yeah, actually, I loved uh, the phrase. It says, um, happiness without any reason. And um, actually, in, in your definitions of this quality, you mentioned the word bliss. And these blissful moments sometimes happen to us in, let's say, in really unrelated moments when you feel extremely happy or blissful. And you feel extremely connected to everything, actually. Everything surrounding you. They can be people, it can be nature, animals, even the objects in your house. But exactly in this moment, the ego just comes to surface and says that, okay, just keep this moment. I want it. I want to be always in this special moment. And exactly in this moment, this blissful feeling just suddenly disappears and you have to wait for it till the next time just appears by itself. This is just, um, you know, uh, the, the voice of ego that really bothers me. The moment is, is yeah, beyond expression, beyond imagination, actually. But it lasts so, um, let's say, it is a quick, a quick feeling that that is interrupted by the voice of ego. Yeah, well, well, what you just described is exactly right, I would say. Yeah, very nice. I wanted to ask you, because you have a rather good English, uh, are you German or are you uh, some other nationality? Um, I'm originally from Iran. My, my uh, native language is uh, Persian. And okay. I live in Germany. I'm a student here. I study English literature in Germany. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. Good place for it in Germany. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you haven't, I mean, you have a very good English, I would say. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, very nice. Well, we haven't met you yet. Maybe you come and visit us sometime. Through. Do you live anywhere near um, where we are in Cologne? <clears throat> Actually, I live in Bielefeld, <clears throat> in NRV. I can say I, I'm near Köln, the, the right. city. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think anyway. it's a three-hour or four-hour train uh, to, to your place. Okay. Well, it's definitely worth it, so come sure. sometime. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, happy. good. All right, so I think we're going to stop now. So, yeah, it's 10 o'clock. Okay, so I enjoyed this evening particularly. So um, there'll be another one next uh, next Thursday, starting at 8 o'clock. Particularly if you're all so awake, asking questions, making comments, very nice. Thank you very much for that. And uh, so I'll see you next week. Thank you.